Oh, man. It's kind of crazy. We were talking about the military industrial complex, <laughs> and now we're going to talk about <laughs> right music. On to more yeah, serious is, issues in the music yeah, business. To tie, more pressing. <laughs> to tie it all back to the t shirt you just let me buy from you. <laughs> we're back in the time. P.M. You know, music, man. It's, it's going to save the world. Uh, oh, man. All right. Andrew Miraboli. Cheers. Jimmy Zembo. Cheers. I've been looking forward to this for a while. Me too, man. Same here. Thanks for having me. You got it. How about you start by telling everybody about yourself? What do you do? Uh, I am a musician. So um, that's what I do. I play music for a living, which is crazy to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> four years ago, I couldn't have said that. And then all the years before that, I could have never said that. Um, but it's really cool and it's really wild. And, um, yeah, so basically I work for myself. One of, one of the things I noticed about you pretty quickly was you have a, you have an aesthetic <coughs> about you. Your music matches it too, but like, I don't know, you have a, a, a look, not just you personally, but the music has a feel to it that's similar to it. And, oh, and your merch actually kind of fits it pretty well. And we talked about that inside. We were talking about your the art for your for bad cigarette too you know like for bad cigarettes i think that's i think that's a really cool uh label no ah, no thank you thank you for saying that man that's that's really awesome that you see that and it's <clears throat> excuse me um that's something i think about and i put a lot of thought into um in most of the bands i've been in i was always there were two things that, two main things that drew me towards music was one, the way it made me feel, which I think is most people's like, oh my God, this song is so good. It just yeah. makes me feel something. I don't know what it is. Either it's connecting with how sad I'm feeling or I just want to dance to this, you know, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. And there's so many different levels of that. And then the second thing was just how cool musicians look yeah. from every yeah. platform of music. You know, I don't care who you are, like. Hip hop's got a style, rock and roll's got a style, pop's got a style, country's got a style, and it's all cool. It's true. It's all awesome. Whether they're me. loading their gear out of a coffee shop or loading their gear out of a <laughs> mid sized <laughs> venue, you gotta look cool 100% yeah. of the time, man. Yeah. You know, well, you think about it, like the way I thought about it was business people, right? Mm. They have a look, which to me looks very stiff. Yeah. Sometimes an uncomfortable, but they all dress a certain way. They got their dress pants, some sort of. Uh, I'll speak specifically for the male fashion because I'm I'm not a female, but you know the dress pants, some sort of loafer, yeah. maybe, yeah, <laughs> a, a maybe brown it, shoe yeah, of yeah, some yeah. kind. If you're fashionable, you got a wingtip, and then I'm like, this guy knows what's up, mm -hmm. and then some sort of button up, tucked in dress shirt, and mm -hmm. then the, the the full guys will have the suit and the tie. Mm -hmm. Um. And you see that and you're like, that guy works in an office. Yep. You know, yeah. or yeah. for some sort of professional environment. So it, and everybody's kind of. That's got... actually the whole thing, though. Like, I, I think that's part of it. It's like, if you're going to interview, you want to look dressed extremely uncomfortably. <laughs> and, like, and, and, yeah. and you want to be, you want to, you want to somehow appear comfortable with extremely uncomfortable situations, you know? And it's yeah. like, yeah, okay, this guy, want to give him some money. I trust him yeah. <laughs> because he's clearly it's 90 degrees outside and he's yeah. wearing a wool suit. Yeah. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> I guess I, I will it's, give you it's my It's funny business. because we think it's impressive, but I feel like if aliens came down here, they'd be like, that's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> like, do you know what temperature it is? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, guys do look good in suits. I mm. mean, I should also say we have You put, it, you put a here. suit on and yeah. like, it, something about it just feel like. I hear you. Cool. A good suit, yeah. a good tailored suit, yeah, and everything's flowing. You know, your your shirt looks well with the color of the suit. You mm. Got a great tie. Oh yeah, I feel it. And you yeah. know, like the thing the thing you have to have is the pocket square. I the pocket square uh, yeah. is the most important. It's the least functional, the least least important, like the least important from a functional standpoint. But it is the biggest thing that ties the whole thing together. I think so. If, if you have a good pocket square. I'm a fan of just the simple regular fold. You know, I don't, I'm not a big fan of like the crazy folds, <laughs> but I like I like a simple one that matches my shirt or my tie or my socks. If you can tie the socks. Oh in. yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta get if your if your suit is tailored right, 
when you sit down, your socks are going to show. Get a little piece exactly, of some, uh, exactly. some, some flavor there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So is it, is it the same for you? So like when you're like, oh, I'm going to wear my jean jacket today because it, it goes really well with, with, with the cigarette palm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I just, I love all things denim. So, uh, but yeah, I do. Some days, some days, I, some days I'm off and I'm like, some days I, I just want to be comfortable and I'm, I'm comfortable in jeans. I love jeans. Um, jeans and a t-shirt is like my favorite thing to wear. What do you write music? What are you wearing when you're writing music? <laughs> Anything, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> uh, the magic happens in the news. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> slippers and pajama shorts. That was, that, that was kind of my assumption uh, for the answer, but I guess it's, it's yeah. interesting to me how like... Do I have like a music writing outfit? Well, no, no. That <laughs> should get a music writing robe. It's interesting to me how all that stuff fades into the background when it comes to that. When it comes to like the core of what it is. The core of what it is you like love doing, I, I would assume. I, I bet you love performing too, though. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. that's a whole different thing. But when when you're writing music, where it comes from, where all this stuff that you're giving to people, where it comes from, all of that stuff just kind of disappears. It's like, well, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It matters that I would I had the feeling that I had, yeah. and I know what it sounds like. Yeah. And that's just got to make it come out of me now. Totally. It's chasing that feeling. You know, you. That feeling doesn't worry about like what kind of shirt you're wearing. Yeah, you know that feeling's not like. You, you can know. tell when someone's writing music from that attitude, though. You know, I feel like you can tell when someone's writing music from the from that perspective, where the wrong perspective, where they're they are concerned about like the the image of it. You know what I mean? Well, you like, can, you can tell if somebody believes what they're saying. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Like, I feel I feel like. There are some pop artists, maybe. <laughs> oh, this is the oh. first. Uh, this is the first podcast where Scout can come up here because the uh, <laughs> stairs are here. Yeah. If you don't shut up, you're not going to be invited anymore. <laughs> but you know, you you see somebody sometimes, and it can be really good on on all levels. But there's just something about it where you're like, I don't believe you. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't believe like I feel like somebody can even be like not the greatest singer, but they can sing in such a way where it's like you believe what they're saying. And it, it doesn't even matter that they're maybe not the greatest singer, but it sounds really sincere mm. when they do it. You know, I. How can, I want to say this in a way because I understand what you guys are saying. <clears throat> Man, I'm sorry about that. Um, I understand what you guys are saying, and I, I've definitely experienced that. What I think is there's a difference when you see somebody who's really passionate about it um, and there's a level of passion and then there's a level of, of work that has to be put in to meet that passion. Like when I first started playing, I was passionate about it, but I didn't have like the work discipline hmm. and which is always like a constant, you know, keeping that discipline. But I, I there comes a point where there's a separation between, you know, I, I don't think it's impossible for anybody to learn how to sing. Even if you're tone deaf, you can be taught. Oh yeah, I, no, I I, I I could not sing "Happy Birthday" as a child. <laughs> yeah, and that, which is also <laughs> one of the hardest way. songs to sing. Yeah. Um, Didn't know that as a kid. Though. Yeah, yeah, right. No one ever sings that on key. It's, it's, it's do you want to hear a choir of off-key voices? Just like have someone sing "Happy Birthday" or a crowd of people. But so there is a level, and that level is what separates the people we know is we'll call them famous or hmm. whatever even people around here that, that we love that's the level that separates them is this sort of dedication to that passion um you know because you you do you anybody can write lyrics like i've i've seen a lot of bands i've i like a lot of singer songwriters 
So when I see somebody, I try not to judge hard. I try not to judge those people hard when I first see them perform. But if it gets to a certain point where I'm not feeling anything, mm. it's not that I'm going to judge them. It's just that I'm just not feeling it. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know if it's being delivered in a certain way or I don't know if that's something that, you know, it's just how deep you dive in, you know, because... Some, sometimes too, it's just like not not my not my cup of tea. Sure, people, and that could people be seem it too. to like it, but it's not for me. Yeah, know? like I mean, um, but I think there is a level of personal emotion that has to be put into it. Hmm. Uh, it's almost like you have to give a little bit of blood to mm-hmm. that song, you know, no matter what you're writing about, and I I learned that being frustrated with people not connecting to my earlier music and then realizing started listening other music and realizing like I'm not writing about myself I'm not writing about my personal stuff Mm. and then going into that and then when you sing that in a way where people might not necessarily know because you realize we're all very similar as human beings and what I go through probably we all go through in some way. Hmm. Ah, then there's something there that just, there's like a fire Mm -hmm. when I sing it. That's like, I'm not just singing this for me. Yeah. I I had a, that makes, it makes perfect sense. I had a a Lyft driver once who was a very long ride and it was at like three in the morning to an airport. And I got to talk, she was a writer. I was curious, like, who is this person picking me up at three in the morning on (laughs) Tuesday night? take me to the what life decisions brought them here (laughs) (laughs) she's a writer and so i was talking to her about art and where creativity comes from what it is and she said something that was like perfect and she said that creativity is the residue of experience and i thought that was perfect Mm. because if you don't have a direct experience with what it is you are trying to convey in your work it comes through It, it it or it doesn't come through like it it's very clear when somebody's like you are this is a soap opera of a song yeah you know like this isn't Mm -hmm. there's nothing here that you've ever felt you've never been hurt by this you've never been you know you don't yeah you you don't feel naked enough that's that's yeah i think that that's a really good example is the the person singing about a broken heart who's never had their heart just fucking broken sure like you can you can see that you can i feel like you can recognize that because everybody knows the trope of that's that type of song Mm -hmm. but some people, it's just like you don't believe it. I don't yeah, know. no, there, you there's don't believe a, it. Yeah, and and that's that's where you know being creative to a point where it's um, touching people in a certain way is like you you have to either have felt that experience either firsthand or in a very close second hand mm-hmm. and able to have empathize with it you know Mm -hmm. most like i'm an empath most like stuff crazy affects me man like i'm upset if i upset the the guy at like the counter at the coffee (laughs) shop like send me (laughs) oh man (laughs) this guy hates me i better tip him like five bucks yeah like you could you could write if if you're the child of of a, a deceased parent you could write a song about what it's like to be the parent that's left for sure. Yeah, you could do that, and I could believe it, and and do it. For, like, even an opposite sex parent, you could like, you could do it, and totally, I'd I'd believe you. I'd believe you because you you do you still have a direct experience with, with seeing like the pain on that person's face or the difficulty of that situation, and maybe maybe realizing it as you got older. Yeah. But, but if you're somebody who like, I don't know, I've seen a bunch of movies, and you have an idea about what something is because of the movies you saw. And you try to encapsulate how you felt watching movies. It just doesn't come through. It just, I mean, you how you felt watching movies does matter, but you're not going to write a song about that topic unless whatever that movie did to you, that's where you're pulling it from. The mm-hmm. same place that that movie pulled the feeling from you. Right. You can't, you know? You know, uh, I, I can't say that it's a solid yes or no, and I'll say why in a minute but i know what you're saying you have to connect to that movie who were you watching that movie with what time in your life was that 
what did they mean to you? What happened yes. during the movie? What happened after the movie? You know, what what kind of soda were you drinking? Were you eating popcorn? Was it butter? Was it salted? Was it cheesy? I don't know. Was it kettle? You know what I mean? But that's yeah. there's the so now I'm you're there, right? Yeah. So and then it's here I think there's a two level process. It's not the only part, but there's two parts that I learned and that I'll say that I think are important and we'll talk about songwriting. But it's like, how do I connect to the material and how do you connect to the material, hmm. right? So I can write a song about myself, my feelings. I could write that forever, right? But like, how many songs can someone listen to where they're just like, man, this guy is sad. Yeah. Like, I feel bad for him, but I got to listen to some Ariana Grande. <laughs> like, I know. Um, so then, and you flip that perspective and you hear a song and you're not feeling good and you're like, I really, this song gets me right now mm -hmm. and I really connect with it and I want to hear it over and over again. I'm feeling like crap, but every time I listen to this song, it makes me feel a little bit better. It makes me feel a little sadder, but it doesn't make the sadness feel that bad. It validates yeah. your life experience in a certain kind of way. Sure, man. Yeah. And we all really want that. We all just want to be validated. You know, I want it when I'm buying coffee. Yeah. You know, like, did I make a good choice? <laughs> <laughs> You're tipping people $5. I feel like that validation uh, yeah. is coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Would you, so it sounds like it's a vulnerability thing. You know, yeah. like you have to be, like yes. your, 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 your music has to make you vulnerable. You have to be vulnerable to your music. You okay. have to be willing to open yourself up and show a part of yourself. You, you don't have to, you can be direct. I mean, it's interesting because I find it difficult to talk about. I feel like when you talk about songwriting and you talk about hip hop, you have to put them in separate categories, which is where I was going to go yeah. before because when you talk about not writing from authenticity, I, I think of a group like NWA. I do want to say, I, I do think there's a different authenticity. Totally that, different. That comes like with that hip hop. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it's, it's a much different world, but I, I'm not a rapper. So right. I just want to, as a disclaimer, <laughs> we'll just exclude <laughs> hip hop from this category. Because I didn't mean to attack hip hop. Oh no, I didn't but... think you were. I, per it just, you just, put something in my brain that made me think about how like you know there are there have been a lot of artists out there who didn't come from the quote unquote streets mm -hmm. but have seen things that were happening and were very observant as what was going on and then embodied a character um and did it very well um but it's a totally different arena i mm -hmm. think than songwriting um, that's just my opinion. I, but I don't think there's any rules, but sure. Might be going down a black hole here. No, Somebody save me. No, 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 I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I think that there's all, there's also, there's like different ways that you can connect with music because like, I'm not a big jam band person. So I have my own particular bias. I don't really tend to enjoy the music of like jam bands. Typically it's not my cup of tea. But people do like like that music, and I a lot think, of people, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a, there's aspects of why you might like something that go beyond music at times, like the culture that can surround something. That's a really good is mm. part of part of what draws you to it, and part of what you like about yeah. it. And that's a really good point. When I was younger, I probably would have been like, "Well, that's not as like real somehow," but it's like whatever you like. For what for whatever reason you like it, you know. No. Like, I don't know that one is more valid than the other. No, that's a good point. That's a really good point. The culture is huge. I mean, when you say cult, when you say culture, I merely thought of punk rock. Yeah, mm -hmm. which was yeah. the culture surrounding that was everything. And it's a flip off culture. It's like <laughs> it's a culture about flipping off everything. Yeah, and, and, and I which, love it. Which at the time when it came out spoke to a lot of people. I think yeah. it, it will always speak to the youth. Yeah. Oh, that's 15 years old, 14 years old. I wanted to flip off everything. I did. And then I did that for like exactly. 12 years. <laughs> a lot of, a lot of like emo music in the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah. It was just, it was just doing the same thing. It Punk was, was doing. I 
remember I had a couple friends in college. I was never really into emo. I didn't really know about it. And then we went to like a handful of emo shows and it was like, it was like a house party. Yeah. Meaning like that's how it wasn't like a concert. It's like, that's how people were engaging with yeah. each other. Yeah. You know, it was like a club hangout. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of those like DIY shows. Yeah. And, and that, that sense of community is like the other, the other side of it. Right. That's why like I connect to what this person's singing about because I feel the same way. Right. And now you're creating, you know, I mean, it's like any popular band has a fan club, right? I think that, you know, we can extend this conversation even further into just us as human beings and how we gravitate towards a sense of community. Yeah, we're, we're all looking for our tribe, you know. <laughs> we totally yeah. are. We're tribal beings. Mm -hmm. um, and we like to feel a part of something and when we get to be a part of something most people you'll have people who will be like you know like the hype man about it and they'll just be all yeah. all about it and those people are great because they help spread the word um you have the people who will be like your army how dare you <laughs> you don't like this band oh, you can just get out of here <laughs> and whatever you know your loyal devotees loyal to a fault and that's all going to come with every sense of community yeah and really we all just want to be involved in it and feel a part of it. I, I, I do. Like, I want to feel like yep. I'm at the party. There's a, yeah. there's a, yeah. a and social. people want me to be here. Yeah. 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 They didn't just invite yeah. me out of pity because yeah. my mom called. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's this social psychologist named Jonathan Haidt that I really like. Ben's going to roll his eyes at me because I cite him often, but um, <clears> he, <laughs> he, he, in one of his books, there's like a whole section called we are, 90% chimp and 10% bee. And the point is so like, you know, we can't find any sense of that sort of communal behavior in most animals that like the way bees are, you know, like the way bees will, will, will like hive. They have a hive. They have mm -hmm. a hive like mentality for the hive, mm -hmm. for the group mm -hmm. where chimps don't really have that to the same degree. They might like with their kin, but um, so he was saying we're, we're, we're like bees in a little bit. And he used an example that I thought was perfect. He was talking about if you were trying to explain why you like going to a college football game and, and, and you were looking to it uh, and you were trying to say, is it about the football? It clearly isn't. You know, if you tried to describe to someone why you love going to a football game purely in terms of a football and it moving across a field, you, no one would understand what you're talking about. But if you're like... It's just the thing. You get up, you wear, you wear your Sunday best. Mm -hmm. You go to the to the place where everybody's drinking all day, and you drink, and you like you sing songs, and you do chants together, and you get in unison, and it feels good to be like to have a place where like, we're all in this, yeah. and we're all doing one thing together, you know. And that's like the positive yeah. end of it, it. Can go bad, you know. You can oh, have, well, like, of course. I mean, it can always go bad. The the mob is the other end of that, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah. it's just that kind of thing. You can have that at a show. You can have that at a certain type, like jam bands, perfect example. But I think yeah. the reason people go to like hundreds of Grateful Dead shows isn't because of just drugs. You know, it's like, right. no, no, no. They have an experience there that they love. Because of the drugs. And they, oh, because <laughs> of the drugs. <laughs> but I won't deny the drugs. Well, the, yeah, sure. Imbibing is part of any kind of community. Usually sure. part of any yeah. kind, of kind of communal. Yeah, no. It's, but, but you're right. Thing. It's that sense. It's that greater sense of like, oh, you know, you get to see maybe your friends that you saw on this show run. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen it. You know, I used to like jam bands. Mm -hmm. um, I've, seen, <laughs> I've seen different like jam versions band. of The Grateful Dead. <laughs> I've seen Fish a handful of times. And, and I, I, I probably won't go see them now unless I get a free ticket. Yeah. And someone really wants me to go. But I just I'm at a different place. But yeah, it, it, it was really cool to see that. Yeah. It was crazy to see that. It Indeed. was crazy to see people like who had their cars full of like camping and uh, all bunch of other stuff that were at this show. And they're like, we're going to the next one. It's like, that does seem kind of fun. That's like this American adventure. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, and, and whatever you get out of it, you get out of it. But like, it is this <laughs> sense of community, a sense of adventure and a sense of feeling alive. Yeah. You know, like 
I like I, I would say like I'm not personally going to do that, but it makes me happy that there are people doing that. Yeah. Sure. If that makes any sense. And, yeah. And you know? Look, you know, some people like to hang glide. <clears throat> some people like to ride a unicycle. I don't know, man. You know, everybody's got a different <laughs> yeah. thing that that they that you know gives them that satisfaction. Um, but it, I think, yeah, you know, it's it go it goes back to that greater sense of of community. And um, I think that there's, with being a songwriter and being a musician, um, that's another aspect that I learned to embrace. Because when I was first writing, I was definitely doing it just for me. I wanted to make it big and be the next whatever, you know? And I wasn't thinking the way I was writing, I was kind of writing in this way of I was chasing things and like, ooh, that song sounds cool and a lot of people like it, so let me write one like it. Yeah. Instead of finding this inspiration of like this feels good to me. And and that's all discovery. It's all this path of self discovery. What music do you really resonate with? You know, are you are you writing pop music? Are you writing rock music? Are you writing country music? You know, where where do you live? And then what type of people are you trying to connect with? What is your, what's your tribe? You know, what are the type of people that you like to be around? And that could be a very small, you know, area, but it's a place to start. And it's, it's cool. It, to me, it was, it's way cooler. When I think about writing songs now, I'm, I go very personal but I also love that when I get started with something, I think about how like I love how much it connects with me, and then I get excited about how much it's going to connect, and I hope it's going to connect with somebody else, you know. Um, and it goes back; it goes back to that sense of community. Like I, I love when someone listens to a cert, like a specific song, and oh. Like, you know, that song just connected with me. Like, that makes me so happy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's awesome. I don't know. It's really cool. It's like, you know, when you're a chef and someone really likes your food. Yeah. And you put so much passion and effort into your food. And you're you're not just making it for you. Mm -hmm. You know, it's totally, you are, they are doing this. Yeah. For for you, the person sitting at the table. Like, this is for you. Mm -hmm. You know, the 13, 15 hours in the kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. The burns on the hand. Yeah. Not even including the like the time they tried this thing yeah. and oh, totally the, ruined it. Right? You know, like, the stack of other yeah, dishes in the yeah. back that did not work out right. quite oh, exactly. as well. And that's like, oh, yeah. the stacks of songs. I mean, that's, I really, that's what uh, I was going to... I, I wanted yeah. to say, cause we talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, one of the things I noticed in talking to people is how much... Like people like yourself is how much... Because you're focused on what you're doing and you want to keep doing it and you want to do more and you want to do better and you like it's good that you want that. But you I think so many people in your position don't realize what you've already done. You know, there's mm. like there's this there's this like lack and I get it. I'm, I'm, I'm not at all criticizing it. I think it's almost necessary because otherwise you become attached to what you've done and it limits you. You know, there's a there's a fear of complacency, too. Right. Yeah. So I get it. But it's but it's like I think. I think that that can almost be become a hurdle for a new person in the game because they see you only it's like Instagram. You only see the results. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't you don't see like you said the stacks of songs that didn't pan out, that didn't that didn't work out, that like I don't know, the, the different attempts you've tried and like just right. just keep doing it and then yeah, you don't see that. You only see the the negative. So I think even even of ourselves, we cannot recognize Wow, I've done a lot to get here. I've done I've done quite a bit. I deserve what I've got, but it's still not good enough. It... That's a really good point. I, I think we tend to measure ourselves up by our most recent achievement. Mm-hmm. Um, which is a bigger thing with society. Um, you know, it's not anything that's new. I think we've been doing that for a long time um but that's kind of the i guess the the catch of 
getting to a good song, mm-hmm. right, is there's like sometimes five or 15 songs before you get to that. Like, I've been writing music since I was 15, you know, and since I'm 34 now, so 15 to 34, think of how many songs I've written. And then what I've learned as a musician, like as a scholar, I'm not, I'm not a scholar, but as, as a, as a, a scholar. student of music, in the school um, of rock. <laughs> I actually used to teach there. Um, it's a true story. Uh, shout out School of Rock Albany. Um, thanks for not firing me. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't think about it. I forget sometimes where I used to be and where I am right now. You know, I forget the years working so many different jobs that like every, sometimes those jobs was like every day going into that job, I would pray for anything to happen, like on my way to work. Yeah. Like some days just like, just swerve wrong, buddy. Just swerve the wrong way. (laughs) Just let me, just, just let me get a bad tire or something. This bus, you know, like just so miserable. And then the good jobs where they were feeding, but, you know, any job I had, um, I was always just waiting for my way out. Hmm. I was just waiting for that, you know, like, where's my, where's my exit door? But you have to create the exit door. Yeah. You know, um, so, so I, I forget all those years of this kind of anxious anxiety to get where I've been and and it's it's weird I don't I don't know if I don't know if like we have this ability in society to sort of pat ourselves on the back for a minute you know it's like we don't want to sit on our lore rest on our laurels is that the phrase Mm, yeah because at the same time society has this thing too where it's like you got to constantly be doing this this you got to be going grind, hustle, never stop, sleeping them dead. It's like, yeah, you have to do all that, but you also have to take care of yourself. Yeah. And you have to like, like the happiest people are the people who, you know, they're kind of moving simply mm-hmm. through life. And I don't mean in, in their mental status. I just mean they're moving simply and they're like, they're not trying to achieve these giant things. They're just like happy that their tomatoes were in season this year. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Then they yeah. can can them and sell them at the farmer's market. Or they're, they're, they're living on like, I realize like a lot of people that are happy, like I have very high ambitions and that's okay. But that's hard when <laughs> like, you know, you don't meet those on a regular basis and it's like, okay, you have to scale things down. Like, Maybe I'll just be happy today if I practice guitar for a couple hours and work on a song or or like maybe that's okay because that's the stuff that used to just be okay. Yeah. Right. And now it's like, you know, it's like, what am I going to Instagram today? Oh, I didn't do anything cool. Uh, I, it's 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 funny because I have two thoughts in my head right now. So one, when you when you get depressed. When you get to impress or, or if you have anxiety, if you get into a bout of that, all of your accomplishments are gone to you. Mm. You know, like they're gone. They don't exist. They don't matter. Yeah, so true. Like, and, 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 and even thinking about them in a positive light makes you feel bad. Yeah, well, it's, al- it's almost like you could do it once and now you can't today. Right. So like mm-hmm. now you really lost right. something. Yeah. Oh, but God, but. that's like, dude, that you nailed it, man. That <laughs> but, is the thought. Yeah. That is it. Yeah, I have I've lost so it. It's times. gone. It's right? gone. I'll never, I'll get never it back. be that again. But the other thing is, so, so that's so this is perfect because when you actually lose something, you have the exact opposite reaction. So like if you're an athlete and you get injured, you realize how much you could you were able to do. Mm. You know, you you realize, you realize how much you you were taking for granted, and and uh, it's just interesting to me that like depression is this fear of loss that isn't real. Or this feeling that something's gone, mm. but but actual loss is is like realization of how much you were able to do that you really can anymore, you know? Oh it's, yeah, and that's it's it's interesting. 
No, that's... It, it helps me to think... When I start to feel depressed, that's the kind of stuff I think about. Like, that's... I think about... Hey, remember when you when you had to get surgery on your wrist and you couldn't do anything? This isn't that bad. Right, you know, like, yeah. This isn't, this isn't that bad. Right. This is just... You're just not feeling good right now. Yeah. You know, it, go do something, you'll feel better. No, but, you're right. You're right. Um... Uh, you should write a song about this. You know, yeah, I should I should not only write a song, I should think about it the next time I think I'm a terrible guitar player and just be like, well, at least you still yeah. have all five fingers on your left yeah. hand, you know? Um, yeah, why, do you, why do you feel like you're a terrible? Because I think you're really good. Oh. And, and uh, I think, uh, well, you, you have, I was trying to, I asked somebody today, what I, I put on bad cigarettes, and I asked, what, what style of music do you think this is? It's interesting to ask, like, what would you label this? What would you label this music? It's tough. It's tough with any modern music today. Yeah. Like, every, the categories have broken down. Yeah, we've so, blended. Yeah, so I said, I said something like bluesy southern rock or cool. something like that. You know, like, there's, 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 a, there's like a little bit of country in there, but I wouldn't want to call it country, you know? And Would it, wouldn't be offended if you did either. <laughs> it's not. It's not like. A, it's not like a hit at you. It's just like. No. It's none, no, no. I like hit. the. Yeah. I don't know. It's. It's interesting. Thank you. So. Thank you for saying that. I. I forget where I was going with the whole. Southern, with the oh the categories. Talking about guitar playing. Oh, guitar playing. Music. So perfect. So that's a sound. You know, you've. I think. I think I'm gonna be a little harsh on you for a second. That's you're, all right. Because you're harsh on I'm yourself. Harsh on myself you're harsh on yourself. So I think. You're focused on the technical skill, probably, right? And you're probably comparing yourself to people who are doing kinds of music that you don't really want to even do. You know, oh, like, that is so true, well, Jimmy. It, yeah. That you, you Am don't I even, gonna, should I pay you right? after this conversation? It's starting to feel like a therapy session. <laughs> but, but you see what I mean. But, but you've really gotten the sound down. You know, you've gotten the sound you're trying to do down. I just think that that's what you're doing when you're hard on yourself. I think you're, it's I. Th my my personal feeling on that, and I do it myself, is it's self sabotage. You know, you're you, the oh, yeah. the part of you that is yeah. like I'm not good, is like that's like a little demon in you, and that demon is like I know how to make you feel not good. Yeah, I'll tell, I'll make you think about this person you don't even want to be. Yeah, like yeah. And, well, yeah. And you, you also <laughs> discount you discount what you what you're actually good at. Like we like to imagine that somebody who is a really talented proficient musician could just play any type of music they wanted at any moment. Right. Just right. like there are some freaks of nature out there who can do that, but mm -hmm. most people like there's a certain style that they're really good at. Yeah. And uh you know, it's like we like sometimes like doing the wedding stuff. It's difficult because You'll be playing styles of music that that's not the style of music you play. Yeah, yeah. So totally. it's really easy to kick the shit out of yourself for the yeah. fact that you're not like really great at that. Yeah, yeah. I also I Me guess, meanwhile you don't even recognize like yeah that song you just played you did great at that because you're right. familiar with that but that doesn't count that's right. not good for anything. This is a great this is a great segue. Well we should all say I play in a wedding band. Yeah, I think, so every, I think everybody sorry. does now. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but <laughs> anybody who doesn't, who doesn't, Silver really, Arrow as well. Yeah. Silver Arrow. Yeah. Anybody who doesn't really know me. So. I want to talk to the people who run that company. <laughs> <laughs> They're down in uh, New York City or Los Angeles. Um, but anyway, uh, so we were talking about being hard on yourself, um, and I appreciate what you said about the sound. Um, Cause that's definitely something that I'll forget that like all the time I took to craft, mm -hmm. like all the songs that sit in the same, they all sit at the same table. You know, it's not like, here's a rock song. Here's a funk song. <laughs> here's a soul song. Here's a jazz dude. <laughs> we can do some salsa next one. You're like, not going to know just, how to describe yeah, this gig. Like, when yeah, you're yeah, if I were a terrible. musician, that's what I would be. Right, like, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what would happen. This to next me. tune is yeah. EDM. <laughs> all right. Get out your glow sticks. <laughs> Um, so this demon, right? The self sabotage, right? That's you. You nailed it, man. It's like the one in my head is just like, let's burn this mother down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How fast can we do it? And it's weird yeah. too how it how easily it tricks you. Like this this little this little ego in you. This little ego is just one of them. Just this yeah. one little ego that's about I'm not good, and and. It, you're a slave to it. Like yeah. it, it knows exactly what to Off say. Of like a small yeah. moment. Yeah. That, that's like, what I think people think. Like that's where I think the concept of like demons and devils and witches came from. It's just like 
people being aware. Oh yeah, there's little little things that come about yeah. and make you feel terrible about yourself. Uh, intru- sure. Intrusive <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, well, you know, it was probably a much more mystical and magical time when those things. We also have a lot of be. luxuries today. So we, we, if you imagine life or death, and you you'd be immediately recognizing, I cannot think this way today. I will die. Right. You know, like if right, I, I can't be depressed today. That I'll, is so I'll true. I'll die. <laughs> that is so true. How how much of uh of that that feeling though? You say like just burn it all down feeling, or, or more so like to what degree do you think a fear of actually succeeding might be influencing that? Ooh, like that's a great it's a terrifying thought no. that you might actually succeed at what you're trying to. That's do. a great question. Um. And so that fear, it's kind of a, these, these two are kind of codependent on each other, right? Uh, one feeds the other and that fear of success becomes, okay, if I succeed and I do this, then I have to keep doing it. Yeah. Mm. And then I have to, the fear is, will I live up to what I did? Like, that's so weird. And it, and that's not, I don't think that's anything having to do with us Personally, that's with the society, or not society, that's with like the general surrounding things with art. I don't know how to phrase this, but I'm going to get there. So, you know, we, it's like reviews of movies, movie critics. You know, if you're a director and you did a blockbuster film that like art houses love, and then you came out and you did like some rom com, and everybody's like, this is garbage, like, <laughs> I don't know how you're going to feel like you either got to keep pressing or you never make a film again. Yeah. You know, and when really it's like, well, maybe you didn't like it and maybe all these supposed tastemakers didn't like it, but the artist is still the artist and we forget that. And I think that comes back to the sense of validation within the community. Hmm. We want to be validated by our community but we also have to have this much stronger self sense of validation of like, I'm okay. Like, I think it's somebody like Neil Young. I'm not the biggest fan of Neil Young's music, but this guy does not give a fuck. <laughs> like, no, my, I didn't see it. A couple of my friends went to Farm Aid a few years ago, and this guy, Farm Aid's his thing. And when he goes on, he plays like five songs, but he goes on a huge rant about saving the farms. And people were booing him. <laughs> And he goes, and my friends told me the, the funniest thing he said was, fuck you, I work for myself. <laughs> like, nobody tells me what to do. And it's, like, so great. Like, this dude is at SPAC playing in front of, like, however many thousands of people. People are booing this legend. Yeah, it's great. And he's like, just like, you can boo me, yeah. but go fuck yourself, yeah. You're man. here. Like, yeah, You're, you pay, yeah. <laughs> buddy. Money's in the bank. I won. <laughs> yeah. You're losing. So sh- like, and That's why he wins. That's why he wins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why he's, you know, like, I really like Lou Reed. Mm. And Lou Reed put out an album once called Metal Machine Music. And it's a, just a noise album. Noise is like this genre of music. It's just noise. Some people really like it. Like, some people really like white noise. But he got, like basically crucified by critics and Lou Reed was in the Velvet Underground. He's a yeah, I know songwriter, but that was just him doing what he wanted to do. Right. Yeah. I've you earned th- I've earned this. It's like, it's like a, yeah, I've earned this. This is what I've, I want to do I've right done, now. I've had a lot of success. This is something I really want to do. Yeah. It's a passion w- project. I don't want to give you, you know, and it could have been an F you to his label. Who knows? Doesn't but matter. that I really respect that strong sense of self, like validation because I, I maybe they do struggle it I don't know you know it, it is it is a battle it's kind of a battle in our heads because like we make music and we're dependent upon the people consuming our music yeah right um, okay so here's something I'm gonna make a bold statement here I feel like you we're in a state now where you don't have to be super famous to do that anymore mm, yes you The barrier to entry to release and put art, well, let's bring it back to music because I'm most familiar with music, but the barrier to entry to release and put out music is no longer as difficult. So Mm -hmm. anybody can do it. Um, And 
Also, you don't need to be crazy famous to have a successful career, but you do have to have a certain number of qualities that align with working really hard. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say I'm like, I'm not completely there yet. I'm also very new and understanding it, but you ha it's, it's like running a business. You have to learn how to run a business. So if I'm creating, by the way, people watching might not know today's episode is sponsored by Polar <laughs> Seltzer. It's not, but it could have, it could, it be. could be, it could be, it could be. <laughs> All your flavor needs. I recommend um, the lemonade versions. <laughs> uh, but you know, if I'm if I'm releasing a product. Um, I'm trying to think of what product I want to release. Uh, we, right. We could even talk, we could even talk about LaCroix seltzer, right? LaCroix was this huge, got this big, like popularity boom. It was marketed in Whole Foods, you know, in like health food stores, you know, like it was marketed to those types of people. Right. And all of a sudden it was like, ooh, it's fashionable and hip to drink <laughs> seltzer. We have these fancy flavors like pomplamousse, which is just grapefruit. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there's apricot pear. <laughs> it's like, to me, this shit all tastes the same, man. Yeah. Like, but, but they knew who they were going after, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to know who, you know your audience. Mm. Like, maybe even giving too much, but I have thought about who my audience is. I know my audience isn't young kids in high school, hmm. you know? They're not gonna be wanting hearing tales about smoking too many bad cigarettes. They wanna <laughs> smoke all the cigarettes or all the yeah. vapes, whatever. Yeah. You know, like, I know what kind of music fans I'm going after, you know? I know what kind of music they listen to, what kind of music they like. Like, I'm, people who like jam band music aren't really gonna be into what I do because we don't jam, Right. you know? People who like, Funk and soul might kind of be in what I do, but they're way, they're like out there. If you like rock and roll and you like country music and you like outlaw country and you like blues, oh, country, you're going to be yeah. into what we do. So right there is my base, you know, and just, just what we're, we're talking about, yeah. like kind of marketing, just out of curiosity, do you have like an elevator pitch? Like if I was going to be like, describe your sound and you know like two sentences what would what would you say your sound was? uh i do have one i'm do curious you, you I'm want curious. me to say yeah it? yeah so the most the the one i say uh most all the time is um this one's really easy it's imagine rolling stones meets chris stapleton that's that's, that's good so that's good other or you get what's your sound i'll say it's uh country soul and rock and roll <laughs> <laughs> it's like my sign off for my radio Love show, it. right? Yeah, that's, that's good. So, man. but dude, I mean, all that was <laughs> pouring, and I have a whole nother thing. So, you, people... you really, th like, you sat down and you put some real thought into, like, specifically to use, like, the Rolling Stones and the Chris Stapleton example. You really thought, like, okay, what are some names people would recognize? Mm -hmm. what, what do I sound like? And you really, like, spent some time trying to figure that out. I made lists. It works of, really well. Of, whom the influences were that I wanted this music to live in. Mm -hmm. And they, these are all true to me. Yeah. You know, like they're totally true to me. And I made lists and I picked the two most popular that I figured people would get. And then if they don't get Chris Stapleton, I'll throw in an old school soul singer like Otis Redding or mm -hmm. Ray Charles. Yeah. And they'll be like, Ooh, yeah, I really like that. You know, and, but, but then that's great. No, and I love when that happens because that means they get it. Like they, yeah. and they, they're, I see their, their gears turn in their brain Yeah, and they're either going to be into it, which I don't get the ooh, or they're into it. And then it's like, cool, I've got you. But all this, I mean, you know, this comes from hours of reading websites, um, articles, you know, like I'm subscribed to, I get a lot of emails from songwriting and like music, uh, newsletters, uh, also a couple different books. Did you read the Ari Hurston book? Of course I did. Yeah. That was this, yeah. this, that was like, there's a, it's a great I, book. I it's a it. fantastic book. I want to order the new edition and reread it. Um, because my book is falling apart. That's how much I've like, yeah. I go to it. Yeah. Cause I go to it for different things throughout the time I've gotten it. But 
That's a fantastic book. The uh, War of Art. It's fantastic. Jimmy just had me read that. That's that is, so that is good. such a good book. Uh, yeah. That'll light a fire under your ass right there. Oh, well, it just, you know, it 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 gets you going. Yeah. Um, it, like lays it right out for you and and uh it is It just made it makes it simple. It makes it simple. Like either you get up and you do it or you don't. In which case resistance has won. Yeah. It is funny to it, me. Yeah, it's so true, man. There's certain common books that are coming up with people like I had Tom Tom Regal, uh, an MMA fighter, and he mentioned The War of Art as a book that you have really? to read. Yeah, it's one of the books he said you have to read that book. It's interesting to me that like these, it's like these new liturgies, you know, like these new these new like oh this is the way to be. Like this is this is you need to read this, you need to pay attention, and this is what you have to do. This this is how you have to live your life if you want to keep going. Yeah, if this is how you have to see the world. You have to. This is how you have to have a perspective on things. You know what those books do a really great job is pulling you out of the distraction because hmm. we're we're so oversaturated with distractions. Um, so we'll. I mean, Instagram is both a tool and a crutch, right? It's a phenomenal thing for artists musicians, photographers, anybody, anybody. If you have a medium that's creative, Instagram is a great tool. It's a window. And for the people who consume it, it's great for them hmm. because it's an easy format. Well, every too, everybody wants to, to like go along for the ride. You know, everybody yeah. wants to be like there in the studio when like, cool shit is happening everybody wants to see that happen yeah you know, like yeah we want to be we want to peek behind the curtain well because yeah. the curtain was iron for so long um there were so many secrets and now it's kind of whereas we used to embrace the mystery now we're kind of embracing um you know that people are bringing us in mm -hmm. We're humanizing it. Yeah. It, there's a connection, though, too. Yeah. Like, if you are a fan of what I do musically, like, that's got to be cool to see what's going on. Like, I know when there's still artists that I like, but when I was, like, you know, younger, and I'm not saying it's not relative nowadays, it's still super cool to see it. But when I was younger, I would have just loved it. Like, I would have eaten it up. Because I was like, I remember scouring in the early days of the internet, like scouring for, you know, when artists were first writing blogs mm. and like checking it every day. Like, ooh, ooh, what'd they update? Uh, what'd they update? I had a, it was like a Blink-182 like concert video or something. And like one of the special features was like this little behind the scenes featurette. I'm just thinking that was like the coolest yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like how cool, how cool these dudes are. <laughs> Going backstage is what everybody wants to do. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's a different world. You want to be a VIP. Yeah. It is a different world, though. You know, it's a, it's a, maybe it just goes back to that sense of adventure we all want to feel in some way. And, and, um, do you think, so like there's this idea that America made everyone a king? We live like kings, we all are property owners, we all, you know, we all we all have our own meals and we all do this stuff. But do you think that like the modern technology has made everybody a VIP? Like you you get to see the reality of everything now. It's it, the no, I think there are some air quotes around that too to some degree. Sure, yeah, you can't is, see everything. It is still like curated. It is, yeah, true. But it's yeah. But if it's, I showed you guys my reality, you probably wouldn't like most. Yeah, of it. Right, yeah, no. right. Though. Yeah, no, it's, 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 like this guy yeah. eats a lot of bacon. Yeah, well, we're well, gonna like, cut that part out. It's, <laughs> it's like Rocky, right? You you want the montage because you want to see that he did the work, but you don't want to see the work. Right, like, like you right. don't. Oh, like, that's, yeah, yeah, you that's don't, a perfect. You don't. You don't want to see. You don't want to yeah. sit there for days and watch this guy that is, fail. <laughs> well, and that's like that's another misconception too, as I think a lot of people think that um, it's all cocaine and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Can't all be Motley Crue. Uh, I think we have this perception that like work is is similar to like an '80s movie yeah. montage. Like, man, if I just get some sweet cuts 
and somebody running alongside me next to a beach or on a beach uh, <laughs> while the sun is setting. I mean, I will train. <laughs> I'll be ready. I'll be ready for that test on Monday. Yeah. Um, we all want beach body I, I in want, 20 days or whatever. It is. Yeah. I like to joke that like uh, if you put together like a little three minute film of like, what is it like to be a band? It would be like two minutes and 45 seconds of carrying your fucking equipment from one place to another and 15 seconds of being on stage. Yeah, and that would be, that's what the life this of is, a this musician is, like, is no, right there. You're so right. Ben, I have this running joke for a, a few years now and people go, so what do you do? I was like, well, you know, my real job is I move stuff from one place to another place. Then I set it up. Then I take a break. I play music. <laughs> Then I got to break it down and I move it back to that same yeah. place. That's my job. I just move stuff. I play music for fun. It's yeah. it's kind of it breaks the monotony of the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie can get really old, so the music helps. But I'm just a professional mover. Yeah, that's really all I am of my own shit. You yeah. know, which is which is good. And it ends um, up back exactly where it was. Yeah, yeah. No, it's kind of it's 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 very it's very strange. But you know that's that's. Huge. That's kind of been, I'm very proud of where I am now and, and I will continue to work hard to hopefully keep going, but it is difficult to get people to understand what it takes, the amount of physical labor and mental and emotional labor to play music, you know, just carrying gear and you know i'm i don't i've uh, you know i have the gear that i have it's not the best or the lightest yeah. you know it's it's heavy um oftentimes it's very hot outside when i'm moving it and i perform only in jeans i refuse <laughs> to perform ever in shorts no nope, no nope, you cannot you cannot do shorts i know <laughs> it's a hard rule I listed in the band. I don't care how hot it is. I'm, I'm not wearing I'm shorts. I'm completely on stage. there with you. There's something that's just not unless yes. unless you're like a, a punk band. Is you know, this the uh, musician's then, version of the uncomfortable suit? Is it, it just you know you just it, can't you it, can't do the shorts. You just you. I wear shorts to work. I get, I get no, and that's okay, <laughs> Jimmy. You know that's all right. You wear you wear all the pairs of shorts you I want. I get it. You don't want to be Jimmy Buffett. I understand. Look. Unless you're Jimmy Buffett. <laughs> that man has made millions. Not complaining. Yeah. Off of wearing flip-flops and board shorts. 